Hey designers, welcome back to the studio. Uh, today we're going to take our folds, the sort of basic uh, mountain valley fold that we practiced, and um, kind of take it to the next level. We'll do some variations of the sort of basic um, cut fold uh, mountain valley technique, and then also um, experiment with a couple of um, sort of level two or sort of next attempts or other versions of this kind of basic fold. Um, we're all just kind of working towards this idea of getting you familiar with the cut fold technique. So let's get into our sketchbooks, get some fresh sheets of paper, and um, start folding. If you're following along in the Paul Jackson text, um, page 22, again, is that um, the basic mountain valley fold. This is a really great exercise just to kind of get back into the studio and um, get your hands thinking and get comfortable with the materials again. The folds that we'll sort of continue to work with today, um, the first one is uh, found on page 37. At least that's where it's um, displayed. Just sort of a variation of parallel folds and, and how that could work. And then uh, we'll try a non-parallel or sort of non-parallel to the edge um, example on page 55. You've got access to this PDF. Um, go ahead and follow along uh, in the page if you want. Otherwise, I'll reference them while I'm working on the demonstration. I'm just going to start by pulling out a couple of sheets of paper here. This way, I know I'll have enough uh, for the whole demonstration. Get the straight edge, and then in your art kit, make sure we have a nice fresh blade. Now, um, I noticed that while I was doing one of my first folds, I was maybe moving a little too quickly, or maybe I had kind of a brittle blade, and I snapped the tip off my X-Acto, so I'll demonstrate today in the video how to replace that. Also, uh, your 6H pencil uh, is really handy because it will make really, really light uh, impressions, light lines. Just so that they show up in the video, I'm going to use a little bit darker HB pencil. Your popsicle stick is going to replace um, the bone folder tool. That um, None of you guys have a bone folder uh, in your kits, uh, so use the edge on this um, uh, popsicle stick to really get into those tight details. In the front page of your sketchbook, um, you've got some blades taped in. Now be careful when you kind of open this up. I don't want you to get yourself with, uh, with one of these, but as you need to replace the broken tips on your X-Acto blade, uh, here is how that's done. Your Blick X-Actos loosen up down here at the base, and so all I need to do is kind of turn that counterclockwise, and you might need to sort of push on the other end until you hear the, uh, hear the front click. As soon as it clicks, that blade will just fall right out the front, and you can take one of these new blades and insert it. The new blades come with a really light coating of oil on the tip, so if you have a rag, you want to wipe that off, that's just fine. I usually just kind of use my fingers. Uh, the oil prevents them from rusting until it's time to use them. So just sort of thread that new blade right down into the top of the, uh, of the collet up on top here, and then turn the bottom clockwise to snug it up again. Uh, doesn't need to be super tight, just kind of finger tightness is good to go. These new blades that I have in your kit um, have a bit of a, a bluing on the outside, so it's really easy to see the grind pattern. Uh, the bluing makes the blade dull, uh, it makes the dull side of the blade dark, and the grind pattern uh, is obviously sort of that shinier steel. Now, this blade, um, which is spent, right, I need to get this thrown away. Now, don't just throw it in the trash can. Um, even though this blade has been broken off on the tip and is useless for us uh, kind of here in the studio, um, I recommend wrapping it up in a piece of paper, maybe crumbling up in a piece of paper before you throw it in the trash. Uh, you'd hate for that to actually uh, accidentally catch somebody in the leg as they're taking the trash out or something. Just be careful with throwing those blades away. I'll use the straight edge on the mat here to line up horizontally and vertically. And I'll start breaking my piece of paper down into five by seven inch pieces.
that stack handy uh, so that you can just sort of keep pulling off the pile as we work with our exercises today. So the very first fold we'll work on today is the, um, the sort of modified um, modified version of our mountain valley. Uh, it's going to be a series of parallel folds. If you're following along in the text, we'll be working on this, uh, this page 37 uh, rectangular prism. Use your grid to, you, uh, to do some of these initial measurements and a straight edge. Uh, I'm going to start by marking off the sort of top of the box and to do that I'll make a horizontal line well, maybe two-thirds of the way up and I'm just going to go straight across edge to edge even though I know that cut won't happen um, initially as I'm practicing these I always like to kind of keep my lines easy to see so over here I'm going to start with a vertical it doesn't necessarily matter how far from the edge uh, just kind of keep yourself lined up with the grid here now I'll count uh, let's just call it four inches to the side and I'll make my second vertical. Now I've got the outer boundaries of the box. I know that my cut will only happen between these two, so these two outer lines I don't really need. Now one inch in from the left and one inch in from the right, we're going to add two more lines. And keeping these symmetrical is important. One inch here and one inch on top for the same reason like that um, you know you're holding a 3d form in your hands generally rectangular prisms um, uh, have equivalent sides on opposing faces for that reason we need a one inch gap on this side and a one inch gap on this side as long as you keep your piece of paper oriented on the uh, on the cutting board the whole time lined up with the grids you should be able to quickly find those lines each time start with my cut and I'm going to be really careful to precisely start and end right at those points and the rest of these lines are folds valley 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 on the outsides and one mountain I'll use the popsicle stick to come in and establish the valley folds my straight edge aligned underneath carefully aligning it on the straight edge on the top and bottom and lightly creasing it with my finger now each one of those folds uh, wasn't super committed yet I just kind of wanted to place them there in the paper and now I'll gently sort of coax the paper into those positions before I come in and give it a hard crease the hard creases will give it a nice crisp fold and uh, it'll make your piece stand up really cleanly. These exercises are fairly straightforward, right? These, they're, they're sort of basic level one folds. Uh, so if they feel really simplistic to you, um, the added layer of complexity I want you to, uh, to practice would be to um, be as precise as possible with your cutting and your pencil work. Uh, a reasonably sharp pencil is a good idea, and if your pencil goes dull, I recommend using the blade, uh, your, your X-Acto blade, to actually carve the blade a little bit sharper. You could use a pencil sharpener to do that, uh, but generally pencil sharpeners waste a lot of the material on the front of the pencils, and um, it's good practice for you anyway to use the blade to sort of shave the graphite on the end into a point. Uh, it'll make your pencils last longer uh, and uh, teach you a thing or two about carving. I recommend doing that over a trash can because the, the shavings that come out off the top of the pencil uh, will make a real mess. If you don't have a trash can around, uh, use a scrap piece of paper to catch those extra shavings. So the next 
uh, cut fold technique will attempt here. Uh, ratchets up the complexity just a little bit, right? And we're going to do uh, a non-parallel to the edge uh, attempt. Very similar to our past few folds, uh, but this is just going to kind of add that sort of tilt and shift to our designs. For this, I'll just have a 5x7 piece of paper handy again, and I'll line it up with my grid. And essentially we'll take the exact same fold pattern uh, for our um, mountain valley exercise and we'll just take our three lines and tip them sort of slightly on their side. Uh, maybe one of the easiest ways to do that will be to take the whole piece of paper and just tilt it on the grid and just continue to follow our line. This way I can sort of continue to keep my spacing somewhat accurate. So I'll start here over on the left by making one vertical and then I'll go um, I'll just call it one inch, uh, two inches to the right here, one, two. We'll keep these lines parallel and uh, we'll just do one line right here in the middle. We'll keep these three lines one inch apart. Now to give this even more personality, uh, we'll give it a, a horizontal cut kind of paired with a diagonal cut. And the diagonal and horizontals can be uh, whatever angle you'd like to arrange, but make sure that they sort of come to a point here, or come to a uh, connected spot. Okay, so I'll start with my cuts and then add my folds. bottom half of my design here will have two valley folds and then exactly the opposite on the top. The center will have a mountain fold and then exactly opposite on the top. So I'll establish my first folds on the bottom, rotate my whole design around, and then invert my folds. Now that I've got my folds sort of pretty close to the place where I want them, and I've got them gently creased, I'll collapse my design and give them a hard crease. So after working through uh, one of those, it'll really start to feel similar to our initial design. Uh, this one just happens to have sort of a chevron-like feel to it. Um, now what I would like to do is take one of these basic designs and um, work up sort of an iteration of it, right? Work up an iteration means um, I want you guys to sort of um, take these basic skills that the book has provided for us and bring your own um, skills and interest and in design to it. Like what could you do uh, with this basic technique to make it more interesting. So I'm going to go all the way back to our very beginning fold here, our uh, basic mountain valley fold, and instead of doing just two simple folds, I'm going to introduce just some uh, some more cuts. So I'll start by lining it up on the grid again. And in this design, we started with a center line. And then we did um, a line two inches to the left, two inches to the right. But this time, instead of merely drawing one cut line across the middle, I'm going to lay a few cut lines through the design. To do this, 
uh, I'm going to use not just the half inch marks on the cutting mat, but all the really small dot patterns that live in, in between. If you carefully count, each one of these half inch marks is divided by one, two, three, four, five uh, little hash marks, and they're offset a little bit. So you could actually refer to them as uh, tenth marks uh, if you kind of follow each zigzagging dot pattern. Uh, they're maybe not the most precise way to measure out, but it's a way to quickly reference um, how you might get something less than a half inch, uh, but still keep a fairly consistent mark through the whole design. Now, if these are going to be sort of really tightly folded edges, I want to make sure um, that I have uh, enough so that maybe my um, my top and bottom folds, which will be a little bit larger, are become, become valley folds. And then there are enough sort of alternating stripes here that I can kind of go forward, back, forward, back. Uh, to do that, uh, I'll just kind of count that out in my head. This is a valley, we go mountain, valley, mountain, valley, mountain, valley. Now, um, each one of these really tiny little folds in here is going to get fairly complicated, so uh, it may be necessary to work with a little sharper instrument um, than your popsicle stick. And at school, if you want to shape down your popsicle stick so it has a bit more of a point so that you can do more detailed uh, folds like this, that's something that we can do. Uh, we will sand it and polish it so that it basically functions the same way as a bone folder. In this case, I'm just going to keep very careful track of which of my folds are valley, valley, and even in the middle here, alternating mountain and valley strips. Uh, you know, just gently creasing the edge of these folds here. So now that I have the uh, creases sort of generally laid in, I'll come through and begin to make my design pop. Now because these skinnier strips are so very delicate, uh, I'll be very careful in here just using my fingers and alternately using either the bone folder or the popsicle stick to fold them down. Uh, be patient with these delicate designs. Um, the paper will likely tear or deform and what you really want is straight crisp lines in your, uh, in your folds. So I'm going to gently lay these flat until I can carefully give them a hard crease all at the same time. So this design is a simple modification of our basic mountain valley exercise. And what I would like for you guys to do is come up with some of your own iterations and see, um, see what happens when you bring your own design to this, um, to this project. I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. See you in class, guys.